Okay, good morning and welcome everyone. How are you doing? All right, good. So let's uh, pray and then we will get into this morning's class. If someone could you please lead in prayer? Anyone? Uh, put those uh, uh, studies into our mind so we can work through that, Lord. In mighty Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you. So we've been uh, looking at faith and the different insights that Jesus gave us regarding faith. And we've seen that faith is the key without which even though God is willing, um, he doesn't work. So it becomes something that God is looking for. And then we saw how even in very difficult circumstances, what God calls us to do is to believe, okay, to hold on and to trust him. Uh, and in the last class, we were touching about, upon the importance of two things. We say that we have faith in the heart, but one must speak what they believe. So there is a connection between speaking what we believe and seeing it come to pass. Faith always speaks. Faith declares. And uh, that is important. And we also looked at the fact that when we pray, we must pray believing. We must not pray without faith. When we pray without faith, it's as good as those prayers are not answered because we don't believe. And we also saw how when we believe, many times we have this, we have the assurance of the answer ahead of time. That's what faith is, isn't it? We are looking at something ahead in the future, uh, but we have the assurance in our spirit right now because we are believing. Okay, so faith is also important. So two things connected to faith, uh, sorry, believing is important uh, in order to receive from God. So two things in order to receive from God. One is to speak our faith. One is to believe when we pray. Okay, so these are the two things that we saw. Today we'll move on. There are a total of 11 points here. So we'll see how best we can do. I thought in the last class we'll finish half, but we are still in the same chapter and it's been a week. So anyway, let's see. Uh, the eighth point here says, faith must be acted upon. So there are certain instances in the way that Jesus ministered that he wanted people to do something, you know, take up your bed and walk. Go show yourself to the priest, to the lepers, he said. While they were going, they were healed. Stretch forth your hand. So as a leper stretches his hand, he sees that it is healed. He tells a blind person, you go wash your, like he makes clay with his spit, puts it on this blind man's eyes. And he says, you go wash it in the pool of Siloam. When he goes and does that, that's when the healing happens. So here is another insight. There are times when God will say something. But the manifestation of God's promise or instruction will only come when we act on it. Okay? If we don't act on it, it's like we're making that instruction or promise if I may say, you know, with due respect, invalid. It's strange. If God said that we would be healed and that, you know, we would be restored, you know, back into action, he also has an instruction attached to it. Now, if we don't do the instruction, then it's gone. The promise is gone. It's almost like that. 
right of course we have a god of second chances a god of grace and mercy he may um, he may reach out to us again and again but we are letting that promise go we are letting that healing go we are letting that miracle go because we didn't do what god told us to do so that is another thing for us to remember action action you know sometimes um in as far as healing is concerned have you seen this uh, when people call out healing they say it seems like there's someone here with a with a problem in your uh, elbow and you were not able to move it move it why because sometimes the manifestation will come when there is action if there is no action the manifestation will not come so there are things that we must act upon okay when we all we are all uh, uh, you know riding a bike or maybe driving a car you can't do much with a parked car it's parked it's there only you can't do much with it but many times the way god speaks to us is he'll give us one instruction and we may not know what to do like think about abraham abraham go go to the place you know that i'm showing you thank god he started he didn't know where he was going hebrews 11 says abraham went without knowing where he was going but one good thing is there was action to his faith he believed that god is doing something in my life and what did he do he acted if there is no action we may find ourselves stuck so in many things in life god will promise but there's also got to be action involved if we sit down and say but god said but god said but god said it's not god's fault that it's not manifesting we are not acting on it god has a plan god has given us the instruction but we are expected to act on it right so action is also necessary to receive from god there are a couple of examples here in our notes um you could probably read one or two so mark 2 verses 10 and 12 if someone can read that passage and we will read one more you could read uh, matthew 14 verse 28 to 29 but that you may know that the son of man has power on the earth to forgive sin he said to the paralytic i say to you arise take up your bed and go to your home immediately he arose took up the bed and went out in the presence of them all so that they all were amazed and glorified god saying we never saw anything like this yes so what what exactly is happening here the healing of a paralyzed man and how did it manifest when he acted on an instruction jesus said take up your bed and go to your house he didn't say be healed he didn't say you are healed you are well no straight away he is saying to someone who was not able to move till now take up your bed and go home how how will that man do it he is not able to move but thank god he obeyed so as he obeyed he tried so verse 12 Jesus said something he tried that's what we can understand between verse 11 and verse 12 because he tried the power of god made him well it says immediately he arose it's a miracle this man could not do it before but because of obedience it happened okay so when god says something whether in the matter of healing or whether in the matter of leading us in our lives we act on it and then the miracles happen then the power of god is manifest one very good example is if you study about a man called philip philip was a he was a volunteer in the church at that point when we read acts chapter 8 okay he's just a volunteer he's not a pastor or the bible doesn't call him an evangelist nothing he's just simple volunteer good man but he was very obedient to instructions from god so 
we see god taking him to many places god tells him okay you know you need to go to a particular place so initially he is found ministering in samaria after that he gets a prompting that he needs to go down to another place so he goes there he meets um you know the treasurer of uh, a country in africa so for the first time the gospel goes to africa and philip does not even know about it he is simply obeying god's instructions god told him you go he went but what was god doing god was doing something strategic something for the kingdom of god in the history of the church something big was happening what was that the gospel was going from you know that asian region to africa for the first time but how did it go simple instruction god told philip philip you go there and philip was traveling he got another instruction overtake the chariot that's all when god says something thank god philip was very obedient whatever god told him he did it he overtook the chariot when he overtook the chariot that's when he met this ethiopian eunuch and he spoke to him he shared the gospel this man was baptized and all and he went back went back where to africa that's the first believer we kind of you know at high position from another continent that we read about in the book of acts but how did god take the gospel to africa it's very simple instructions philip just walk little faster that's all that was the instruction which philip got what does faith do it obeys what does faith do it acts so he acted he did what he heard and god did something amazing same happens in our lives one simple instruction from god healing manifests okay or you know some fear breaks in our lives god says okay don't be afraid you speak we are so scared we are like no i never speak i can't speak in front but what does faith do action when god told me to do it whether i'm feeling afraid or i'm not feeling afraid i will do it do it right then you see now seeing the gift manifest the grace manifest because action is combined with the faith the instruction of god so that's how god works we must take his instructions seriously now let's read one more uh, passage here matthew 14 verse 28 and 29 and peter answered him and said lord if it is you command me to come to you on the water yes so he said come and when peter had come down out of the boat he walked on the water to go to jesus yes okay so look at this again this is interesting did jesus think of calling peter on the water not sure because seems like peter is asking for it he is saying lord if it is you command me to come to you on the water but jesus is okay with his request and so he says come okay what did he, jesus say come the this is the word of god jesus said come he spoke a word is god's word powerful yeah very powerful but he said only one word no is it still powerful yes. yeah only one word but it is powerful let's see what happens he says come and when peter had come down out of the boat action jesus said it peter is doing it what what peter had to do jesus said come i have to get out of my boat i have to get out of my comfort zone the boat is comfortable being on the sea is scary being on the sea is dangerous it's going to take some effort from my part i have to overcome my fear okay but thank god the scripture says peter had come down out of the boat 
Oh, we must all clap for him. Wow, amazing. Peter, Jesus said, come, and you came. That's what God is expecting from us. Action. Peter, he was always a man of action. Right now, some good action. Peter had come down out of the boat. And what does it say? The miracle happened. He walked on water to go to Jesus. We don't know how many steps he walked. But those steps were steps of faith. Who has walked on water? Tell me. Apart from Jesus, the only other person who dared to believe and follow the instruction of Jesus is Peter. He walked on water that day. But later again, we know what happened. Suddenly, he became logical. Being logical is not wrong, but when logic defies the word of God, then it's problematic. Because God is saying something else, logic is saying something else. His logic at that point said, oh, look at the winds, look at the waves. You're on water, what is happening? This is not natural. The moment he gave into that, faith left him and he started sinking. But what if he had not lost his faith? Who knows? Who knows? Right? But thank God, at least the beginning of what happened shows us the power of obeying God's instruction. And God says, you do this, we step out of our boats. Maybe we've never done it before. But we take courage and we do it. So as we are doing it, it will happen. It will get done. It may be surprising. How is it even happening? Because you took one step. You came out of the boat. OK, so action. Same, we talked about Moses also. Just lift up your rod. Action. If he had not done that simple action, the Red Sea would not have opened. So the point is, there are times when having faith is also having action. We can't say, yeah, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. You sit at home. No, I have faith. It won't work. It won't work. I remember one particular person who um, you know, finished their degree and everything and came home. Did not get a job. Okay, Sitting at home. This may not be applicable to everyone, but I'm just sharing this person's experience. They had like multiple degrees, no jobs. What to do? They've applied for lots and lots of jobs, but nothing is happening. But they decided, I'm not going to sit at home. I will do something. I will do anything. But I am going to start moving. Right? They felt God say that to them. You do something. So any opportunity that came, maybe even a small opportunity, they took it up. And they trusted God that, hey, I am going to move. Surely the Lord will open the doors which are meant for me soon. So anyway, the testimony of this person is for almost one year. They worked in a role which was probably not appropriate for their degrees. But at the end of that one year, because you know of their sincerity, their faith, the doors opened up. And thank God they got that one year of experience, one year of income, one year of whatever, exposure to different things. But the time was not wasted because the person was willing to get up and do something. Yeah, it's not the way I imagine, but I have to do something. Right? Not just sit back and say, yeah, God will do. God has promised. Where is the action? Sometimes there needs to be action. Faith is not just, you say, oh, it's in my heart, it's in my heart. I'm sitting down, I'm waiting, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing. That's not faith. James, Apostle James. He writes, if you say you have faith, show me your works. If you say you believe, show me your works. What are you doing? Faith and action, faith and works are 
connected. We can't say, I have faith, but my actions are something else. Right? It will not match up. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. Um, uh, if there are two persons, uh, one have one don't have belief, mm -hmm. and one have belief. One yes. Belief. Yeah. And one is praying for the other one to be saved or to be healed. Mm -hmm. So whose action matters? The okay. one who is praying, or other person who don't believe? Like he is like, okay, pray. I don't believe. Yeah. Okay, if it happens, happens because I have heard this thing. Right, so right. Whose action matters and how? Matters. Yeah. So uh, this is a this is this could be a normal situation, especially when we go to minister. Maybe people don't believe, and we are praying for them. So whose faith will work? The person who believes. Okay. So the point is, we must always carry high faith or more faith to minister. So generally, it works out like that. If the other person does not have faith also, the miracle can happen because you believe as a minister of God. OK. But in some situations, because of the kind of unbelief that the other person is carrying, it may not work also in some situations. But most of the times, we are hoping that our faith is enough. You got it? Yeah. Like that, uh, there's one incident in Acts chapter 3, where uh, there's a man sitting at the gate. 40 years, he never walked. He was lame from birth. He did not have any faith. Whose faith worked? The apostles. It was their faith that actually healed him. So that's how it should be all the time. Whether somebody has faith or not, let's hope that our faith will work. Uh, but in certain situations, like how we read, Jesus went, but because of their unbelief, he could not do anything. So in certain situations, the unbelief can be so hard that uh, nothing happens. Uh, one more question that hmm. we read that paralyzed man got healed. Yeah. So like. Like uh, as you said that uh, that we prayed and we say that move there. Yeah, now. yeah. So in par in parallel, like if someone is paralyzed and he don't believe, okay, but he don't believe, but it's like okay, pray and all, okay. Then then how? What kind of action does he want to do to be healed? If okay, he paralyzed. Like huh? mentally, what type of action? He could, he can do. What can we tell him to do? Yeah. Like, what could we tell yeah. him to do? Okay. So see, even these instructions and actions, if you notice, every time it was different. What Jesus said was different. Go wash your eyes, take up your bed and walk, stretch forth your hand. So the point is, our instruction comes from the Holy Spirit. I can't just say, move your hands, you know, get up, move your leg. It's not coming from me. Because other person will think that what you are saying. Yeah, yeah. So we, when we say something, no, it has to be an instruction from the Holy Spirit. So you just listen what Holy Spirit is saying, and uh, according to that, you tell them to do what you want them to do. We we have to wait till Holy Spirit tells us. Yeah, yeah. So be sensitive. You know, sometimes it's simple. Like we may say, drink this water. I'll pray. You drink this water. But like, what is that? It does, it's very absurd. Why should they drink the But you're sensing in that moment that this is the way God is going to touch them. Or you tell them, bring some oil. You know, we do that when we pray for people. Bring some oil. I'll pray on the oil, and I'm going to anoint you. Why? Because we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So don't just say something because you're supposed to say something. How is it that the Holy Spirit is? A prompting you say that yeah any yes friend can mm. can we do a deliverance to the faith or do you do do we need the gifts of Jesus 
Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Can we do a deliverance through the faith, or would we need the gifts of Jesus, Holy Spirit? Can we do a deliverance through faith or the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Okay. Yeah, of course. See, uh, in Matthew 17, there was a man who wanted deliverance for his son. He goes to all the disciples. They are not able to cast out the spirit. Then he goes to Jesus. You know what Jesus says? He rebukes the disciples. He says, like, where is your faith? So what does it give? What understanding that does it give us? Faith is needed to cast out a demon. Without faith, and then he says, without prayer and fasting, this will not come out. Okay? Because fa uh, fasting and prayer has an effect on our faith. Our faith will increase. So answer is, yes, we need faith to cast out demons. Without faith, we cannot cast out demons. Okay, second question, for the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? So the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit also requires faith. Let me see if I can get a... Okay, so the book of Galatians, Paul writes to the Galatians and he keeps encouraging them um, to continue in the work of the Spirit. So anyway, Galatians 3.3 3, where uh, he tells them that you started by the Spirit and now you are trying to be perfected by the flesh. So basically what he's saying, started by the Spirit is, it's a matter of faith. It's a matter of faith, not, you know, uh, uh, something that they did to be in the Lord and uh, uh, to have their lives in God. So the emphasis is faith. This life that we have in Christ is by faith now. It's only by faith. So they need to continue in faith and not shift to works. So a part of this life of faith is the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so there's another actually very direct scripture, uh, but I'm not able to locate it right now, where we see that the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit is by faith. It is by faith. When we don't have faith, the gifts will also not operate. So, so the Spirit is faith now? Hmm? Spirit is faith? Right. As you said in the scripture, uh -huh. start with the spirit now. Yeah. So is uh, is uh, uh, spirit is faith now? Is the faith? Spirit. Spirit is faith. Spirit. Yeah. Is, is it a faith? spirit of faith? Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So we don't see any such term, spirit of faith. We don't. Uh, but we know that the Holy Spirit imparts faith to us. Understood. So there is no such unique spirit of faith, but we could consider it as a work of the spirit. Is that okay, Prem? You understood what I'm saying? No? Okay. Fine. We'll explain later. Yeah, there is no unique spirit of faith in the scripture. Yes. If, someone, if It's a normal thing, but uh, it's if someone having headache or a back pain or like normal pain, so it's like we prayed, okay, that God heal me, Holy yeah. Spirit heal me, fill me with your healing, like that. Then what we have to do, we just have to keep on working or we have to take risk, like in what actions we have to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if someone is unwell and we pray, then what should we do? See, there are two, two. Um, we live in two realms. One is the natural realm, one is the spiritual realm. Okay, both are realities. We can't ignore either. So, when we are unwell, we pray. Okay, we declare. We do all those things. Yeah, because that's a spiritual reality. We are pulling the blessing, we are pulling the healing. 
into our natural realm. But we are also part of the natural realm. So we need wisdom. Wisdom. Okay, sometimes just practical things. Like if I'm constantly feeling fatigued, if I'm constantly feeling tired, there could be a simple reason that I'm not drinking enough water. I can pray all I want. I can declare every scripture. It's good. It's good. It's part of the spiritual realm. That's what God told us to do. But if I keep ignoring the natural and I'm not feeling better, it's not that my prayers are not working. It's just that I'm missing one simple practical step. Okay. Okay. I come to class. I'm not able to concentrate every day. I'm struggling. Maybe I'm not sleeping enough. See, it sounds very simple. It doesn't sound spiritual. But if I am truly a believing person, I'll be wise also. I'll, I'll look at my schedule. I'll see, hey, what am I doing? I'm not getting enough rest. Where can I get rest? What can I cut off? OK, do it. We'll automatically see a change. So those kind of things, Prem, because we can't ignore the natural and the practical and keep saying, no, I'm spiritual, I'm spiritual. It doesn't work. No, I'm huh. asking that if I am having a headache, suppose. Right. OK. And I'm having a headache and I prayed, oh God, I'm having a headache. headache. Please heal me and all. Yeah. Then, but my body wants to take rest. But I have faith that I prayed so I can do work. Hmm. So that, that I can do work is the correct action or I should go and rest. I'm asking that. Yeah. So I'm answering that only. I'm saying it depends on wisdom. So in that moment, we have to, one is be sensitive, what is the Holy Spirit is saying. Second is, wisdom will look at everything, right? Like, can you stretch yourself at that point or not? So if you're using your wisdom, you will know. Uh, and if you've reached your limit, then it makes more sense to just rest. But if you've not reached your limit, if you can still stretch, it makes sense to stretch because, uh, if this is again, this is not in the syllabus, but I'm just saying it. See, our, our human capacity is so much. We've not even explored it. We can stretch to a very high degree. When you look at, you know, uh, sportsmen, you look at uh, scientists, you look at people who stretch themselves intellectually, physically, you see the limits they can reach because they've learned to push ahead and ahead. We can do that. There's nothing wrong with it. But know your limit. Like, don't push beyond the limit, is what I'm trying to say. OK. Yes. Yes, Missy. Uh, Ma'am, for uh, tongues interpretation, how operate in us? For tongue interpretation, also faith is needed. Sorry, uh, could you please come again? How in tongue, tongues interpretation? Ah, uh, tongues interpretation. For operating us. Uh -huh. And also for tongue interpretation, faith is needed. Yeah, so for all the gifts of the Spirit, manifestation of all the gifts of the Spirit, we need faith. Without faith, the gifts will not operate. How it is operates in us? Hmm? How it is operating us? When we have faith in God, that, yeah, you know, that these are from the Holy Spirit and God will flow through me, that's when the gifts flow. If you stop believing, the gifts can actually be stopped. You got it? OK, fine. Yeah. Any other questions about action? So I, I'm glad you're asking questions about the gifts of the spirit. See, even when we when we are in supernatural art, when we say pray in tongues or prophesy, we later on we'll study when we uh, you know specifically read about all this. Taking action will strengthen the gift. So the more I step out and I prophesy. 
the stronger the gift of prophecy will operate in my life. Now, if I keep quiet, first time, God is telling me something once, I'm keeping quiet. Second time, God is telling me, I'm keeping quiet. You know what? It will not operate in a strong way because I am resisting. I'm not taking action. But the other way around is, I'm really scared. I'm not sure, but I do the best that I can. I share. Second time, it will be stronger, the manifestation of the gift of prophecy. Third time, it will be stronger, stronger, stronger. How do you get stronger in the operation of the gifts of the Spirit? Every time we need faith to keep manifesting, manifesting, manifesting. And then the way you believe for the operation of that gift becomes like huge. And then the flow is also greater. So just to address your question there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can God take that gift away? Can God take that gift away? That he will not step out. That he is like, no, I don't want to do it. Mm. Because it's not, he's not, he or she is not using it. Mm -hmm. Or if a person is not using that prophecy in a good way, then also. Mm. No, no. Yeah, so when Paul writes to Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 1 verse 6, you know, he says, I remind you, stir up the gift of God. That means the gift is given. But use it. Use it. See, like when we have a cup of tea, you put sugar. It won't be sweet till you stir it. Sugar is there, but it's not like operational. In the same way, gift is there, it's not operational. What is Paul telling Timothy? You have to make it operational. Get it to work. So, answering your question, Gift can be there, but it will be inoperable if we don't use it. Or we can use the word, you know, inert. It's there, potential energy, but it will not give any results. So it's not that God is taking away the gift because you asked, will God take it away? We are not using the gift. Will God take it away? Actually, no. It will just sit there inert and it may if the person never uses it it will just you you can say rust that's it because they didn't never used it so god will not take it away uh, there's one more scripture romans 11 29 it says the gifts and callings of god are irrevocable meaning when god gives us something he calls us okay and he gives us gifts grace irrevocable means he will never take it away. Never, never take it away. Now, if we don't use it, it will just sit there inert. We are not going to get the benefits of it. Now, coming to the other question, if you misuse it, will God take it away? See, there is another, it's like if we misuse it, right? We get into trouble. And it's not that the gifts will not operate, uh, but it's like we've made a mess of the whole thing. So, you know, even if you're operating in the gifts, we'll talk about it when we do understanding the prophetic. Trust is a very big thing. When we use what God has given us in, you know, with integrity in the right way, we are building trust and it gives us more freedom to minister the gift powerfully as the years go by. But if we begin to misuse it, we will lose trust with the people that God has blessed us with. Then no matter how gifted we are, when people can't trust us, how do you operate? You can't. You just can't. Okay. So we ourselves will damage it. It's not that God is taking it away. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah, we'll Yes, yes. Is there a question, please? Uh, what about if somebody backslides? 
and uh, yeah. leaves her passion. Yes, yes, what yes. Happen? Okay, so talking about backsliding, um, there is a particular context in Hebrews chapter 6 and Hebrews chapter 10 where we read if there is someone who has uh, tasted of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, and who has fallen away. So the Bible says if there is somebody who has rejected, rejected Christ, then they, you know, as the word says, right, like they have fallen away or they have rejected Christ. Then, of course, you know, they because they don't have faith anymore, the calling, the grace will, will not be operating through their lives. Not because God took it away, but because they gave it up. So that can also happen if somebody backslides to that extent. Hebrews 6 and Hebrews 10, in fact, it says for such people, it is impossible to renew them because they've gone away from the faith. But let's also remember these instances of backsliding like this are very few. So just for our understanding, if we put a percentage to it, out of 100%, we are talking about you know 0.000001% of you know one or two people who have rejected Christ and have fallen away. But in general, like normal, regular believers, we are sincerely trying to follow the Lord. When we make a mistake, okay, we sin unknowingly or sometimes knowingly. If we repent, then we come back into God's best for our lives. We don't have to worry about, you know, falling away. Falling away is a, another concept. But uh, uh, Anyati, I hope, uh, is that clear? Yes, Pastor. God bless you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, anything else about action? No? Okay, fine. Oh, yes. Yeah, please go ahead. I am only, I don't know how long. I, I'll have to do two semesters of this course, looks like. Anyway, I'm asking that uh, if a person have fifty percent faith and fifty mm percent -hmm. doubt, so healing will be done or not? Fifty percent faith and fifty percent doubt. So, what is the question? So, healing will be uh, done or not? Healing will be done or not? Healing will be done or not? Okay, okay. So, you remember we saw um, uh, Mark Levin. 23, 24, if, if somebody believes in their heart and does not doubt, and you say to this mountain. Okay, so uh, from that, we can understand that God wants us to have full faith and no doubt. Okay, full faith and no doubt. So I would say our faith should be 100%. Doubt can be there. See, we, we've also said faith is of the heart. Okay. So in the heart, faith is 100%. Doubt, when you're talking about doubt, in the mind, questions are there. In the mind, doubts are there. That's okay. That's okay. But in the heart, it's got to be 100%. Now, it can your faith can be big faith or it can be small faith, mustard seed faith. It will still work. But it's got to be 100% of the heart. Yeah, see, I'm also saying based on what we read in those passages, we read, right, like if you believe in your heart and do not doubt. So what does that mean? Uh -huh. Mustard seed faith is small faith. I have very tiny faith, but it's 100%. See, the faith that we have is complete. In our hearts, we are believing that God will do. But mustard seed faith is 
your faith is small so if you want to just use our language i'm saying percentage integrity of faith is 100% but my faith is small i'm believing god only for something tiny right but even that tiny faith can move a mountain that's what jesus said so based on these same scriptures uh, prem matthew 17 verse 20 um and mark 11 verse 22 23 okay see uh, in uh, verse 22 23 23 in between it says and does not doubt in his heart so in the heart it's 100 percent in the mind there are questions that's okay that that is fine with god right intellectually we've not resolved it that's fine but in the heart we completely believe yes 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 we have to come to that place in the heart then healing will happen that was his question gautam it's okay not okay <laughs> okay anyway okay we have four more minutes yes yes boys Uh, so when we say we can have questions in mind, it's the questions, not the doubts, uh, no, Pastor. Like uh, we are not in mind, we are not thinking can God do or not do. In mind also, we know that God is able to do, and even in heart, I know that God can do. Mm. In mind, we I can be questioning how will He do? Like I for me, it's yeah. Like this it, there is no doubt, mm. but there are questions. Doubt is different, questioning is different. In mind, I can't be like, uh, oh, will God do or not do? But in heart, uh, I can be like, God can do, God can do. Like, it doesn't work that way, right? Like, doubting is different and questioning is different. Like, in my mind, I can have questions. How will God do? What way he will use? All those questions I can have. But in my heart, no matter what, God will take care of it and he will do it. There is no doubt, but questions are there. Am I right, Pastor? Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. But I am speaking based on what we have, you know, we have seen in the scripture. So if I want my faith to be operational, in my heart, I must not doubt also. Yeah, right. So then where is it that Jesus is accommodating the doubt? Because a man comes to Jesus, he says, okay, Jesus, I believe. Help my unbelief. Where is his unbelief? Okay, so when he is asking for faith in the heart, the only other explanation left is that the mind is still not settled on that matter. So that's where our, our struggle is. So with that in mind, I'm saying, yeah, questions and even doubts can be part of our mind. But in the heart, See, faith is a settled thing. Now faith is the substance. When it you have the substance, that means you already have that belief that it's going to happen. Something exists, right? Then how can that also exist and not exist at the same time? Yeah. So anyway, we'll maybe I, I'll find better language to explain it in the next class. Let's see. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll take the last question. Is that a question? Uh, my question is, uh, there is a person, God is giving him a healing prophecy and a prophetic uh, prophecy. Uh, he is going and uh, telling pe uh, healing people and telling prophecy, which is very powerful. The person is getting healed immediately. The prophecy is very true. And the people started to see him as a God. They started to see him as God because whatever he is telling and whatever he is healing, it's, it's happening. happening. Okay. Then that person is asking God, God, please take away this gift from me because they started to see me as a God. Is that possible God can take that prophecy from them? And it, the gift of prophecy yeah, from because, them? Because they started to see him as a God. So he is telling God, I don't want this prophecy. Can you just take it, it from Yeah, me. is that possible? Uh, no, God will not answer that prayer because it's not scriptural. Yeah. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says that 
the gifts of the spirit are manifestation of the spirit so uh, what we are praying when we are saying stop this prophecy is we are saying holy spirit you you don't express yourself we can't we can't pray like that we can't so i understand the person is desperate but that is not a scriptural prayer okay yeah they may have to approach it in a different way yeah thank you okay great so since we are out of time we will uh, stop right here someone has to pray before we wrap up the class anyone who has the mic do you Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We just come before your throne of grace, Lord. Thank you for this morning, Lord. From morning till now, you have just led us this far, and thank you for your, your blessings, Lord. As we, as this class, Lord, went, Lord, through faith we can do anything, Master. Lord, let this faith grow in us. Let let our let let our spirit grow in faith through you, Master. Let 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 oh, Lord, let our let our uh, spirit rooted in you, Master, so that we can give fruits and we can be to you, Lord. I pray and you bless us in Jesus name I pray amen amen thank you thank you boys thank you everyone bless you see you next week